Okay. Whose responsibility is proofreading? It says on here, it's your responsibility. Yeah? It's not my responsibility. It's not another teacher's responsibility. It is up to you. Yeah. I can check the structure of your essay. I can answer specific questions about your essay. But I cannot check all your spelling and grammar mistakes. That has to be down to you. Yeah? It's, it's your responsibility. Something I would say is that you need to avoid paying companies to proofread your work for you. There are many companies out there. Some of them claim to be academic companies. And they say that they will proofread your work if you pay them. However, we do not recommend that at Lincoln. It's frowned on by the university. And you could be seen as plagiarizing because somebody else has helped you check your work. So please do not pay anybody to proofread your work for you. It should be down to you. Right, okay, so what kind of mistakes should you proofread your final essay for? Um, these are some of the most common mistakes, and I will look at them in a bit more detail shortly, but first of all, I'll just go through them in brief. Obviously, the most common ones are spelling mistakes or grammatical errors, but you should also avoid informal vocabulary. We've talked about this quite a lot already, um, informal vocabulary means things like abbreviations. So instead of using don't, what should you write? Do not. Do not, okay. Instead of writing eg, what should you write? For example, For example yeah, good. Um, you should also avoid things like colloquial language or slang. And if you can, avoid using the word I. It's more academic to use um, third person. Something else that you need to proofread your essays for um, are making sure that it is concise. If your essay is not concise enough, then um, it needs to be. Um, for example, if you use a lot of words to say something, that you could have said in very, very few words. Yeah. So if you, for example, if you can say something in five words, that's better than using ten words to say it. Um, I know you've all got a big word count. You all have to write 3,000 words. It's a lot, especially if you've never done that before. I understand. I get it. I had to do that once before. Um, however, if you just add words to bulk out your essay, we will know. Yeah? We will know if you're repeating the same point. The most important thing is quality rather than quantity. I know, yes, you have to write 3,000 words, but it needs to be good stuff, yeah? not just repeated. You should also check your work to make sure that you have used enough caution. So, for example, words like maybe, could be, or perhaps, if you are not 100% certain. Check for things like missing quotation marks. If you've used a quotation, you need quotation marks, unless it is a very, very long quotation, in which case you should put it on a separate line um, and you don't need quotation marks in that case. Check your work for poor paraphrasing. We talked about this in the previous lesson. Alex, um, if your paraphrase is too close to the original, you need to change it significantly, and you must include a citation. And finally, poor referencing. Um, again, we talked about that in the previous lesson. You need to check that all the information is in your references. Okay, so let's have a look at all those in a bit more detail. Okay, spelling mistakes or grammatical errors. Um, it can be that if your work has too many mistakes in it, then the coherence of your work could be affected. 
And what that means is that I might not understand what you have written. Yeah. It happens sometimes. If I don't understand what you've written, I can't ring you up and say, Lillian, I don't understand this sentence. Can you explain it to me, please? I can't do that. All I have is your paper, so it needs to be as easy for me to understand as possible. And if you have lots of spelling mistakes, then it's more difficult for me to understand. Uh, both UK and American English are used at Lincoln, and both are acceptable. However, you need to stick with one. So please don't switch between the different spellings in the same piece of work. I'll just show you an example. Okay, let's start with British spelling because we're in the UK. Okay, if I said I'm going to go into the centre of town later today, this is the British version. How do you spell the American version? Yeah, so it's different ending. Center. If you're going to use the British version, you must use the British version all the way through your essay. You can't switch from this one to this one and then back to this one. You have to keep it the same. If you want to use the American version, fine, uh, but then you can't switch back to the British version. Um, sometimes students say, which is better? Is it better to use American English or British English? They're both okay, but um, as we're in the UK, it might be a nice idea to use British English, but they're both okay. They're both okay. Right, okay, let's move on to informal vocabulary. Um, we've talked about this example already. Don't instead of um, do not, you should write the word do not. Personal pronouns such as I should be avoided where possible. Uh, unfortunately, you've got the answer here because I can't control it because I'm wearing this. But instead of in this essay, I will write about. What you could say instead is this essay will discuss the implications of. So please don't use, don't use I, don't use me, my. Um, sometimes your work might not be concise enough, so you might use too many words. Um, you've only got 3,000 words, and I know that sounds like a lot now. It is. But imagine when you come to write your dissertation at the end of, your, um, at the, end of the year. You might have to write 10,000 words or 15,000 words, so you need to be concise. Um, Therefore, you should avoid wasting words if you can. So here's an example of a student that has wasted words, if you like. So they've repeated themselves and they've used far too many words than they need to. Okay, so the potential future problems of global warming which cause the earth to heat up are various. And many scientists believe that there are several issues associated with global warming. What is wrong with this passage, first of all? I mean, it, it makes perfect sense. There's nothing wrong with it in terms of its meaning, but it's what we would call wasting words. Does anybody know why? Good. So potential and future mean very, very similar things, yeah? Good, yeah. Global warming and the earth heating up means pretty much the same thing, yeah. Various and many, yeah. Good. Yeah. 
Global warming, yeah, global warming is repeated here and here as well. There's something else. Yeah, instead of we've got future problems and several issues. Issues and problems in this context, they mean the same thing. So there's a lot of repetition in here. If I wanted to rewrite this passage more concisely, I might say something like this. Scientists believe that global warming will present many potential problems in the future. I could even get rid of the word potential if I wanted to. So I could say scientists believe that global warming will present many problems in the future. Can you see the difference between how many words I've got here and how many words I've got here? The meaning, though, is exactly the same. I've just used fewer words. This one is more academic, really. Uh, you should also check that you've used an appropriate level of caution in your work, especially if you are not 100% certain. Academic authors do that a lot. Unless they know for certain that what they are saying is true and a fact, they will always be cautious. Um, some authors refer to this as hedging, so they hedge their bets. They are very cautious about what they say. And you've just got a few examples here. We talked about this a um, couple of days ago. So maybe, can be, could be, some, perhaps, unlikely. Can you think of any more? Probably, yeah, good. Possibly. Likely. Somewhat, good. Similarly, possibly, yeah. Okay. Missing quotation marks. Somebody does this every single year. They forget to put quotation marks on their quotation. Um, it could be seen as plagiarism in some situations, especially if you forget your in-text citation as well. Um, the Lincoln University Referencing Guide, your purple book, specifies the use of quotation marks and they tend to use double quotation marks. So I would suggest that you use double. Um, but you need to make sure that your quotation marks are always in the right place. Um, you can't see the end of it here. It just says the date and the page number. Um, so according to Smith, there have been significant changes in the welfare system over the past decade. This uses singular quotation marks, but like I say, uh, I advise you to use double. Which words belong to Smith here? Okay, significant changes in the welfare system. So all the words inside the quotation marks. Can you change these words inside quotation marks? No. no. You have to keep them the same. You have to keep them the same. Um, which are my words? Yep. Yeah. Okay, over the past decade. And then if you can see, I've got the name of my author, I've got the year, and I've got the page number as well because it's a direct quotation. So I've covered myself. I've got my quotation marks and I've got my citations. Okay, poor paraphrasing. Um, 
As you know, you need to change the original significantly if you are paraphrasing. Um, that means changing the keywords, it means changing the structure, maybe changing the sentence from active to passive or vice versa. Um, and you must reference. You have to give an in-text citation every time you paraphrase. Okay, poor referencing. We've already talked about this a lot in the previous lesson. Um, but all good essays contain good referencing. Without good referencing, um, your essay could be seen as plagiarism. Um, we talked about what an in-text citation looks like. Um, author surname, date, sometimes page numbers if you're referring to a specific page. Full references are different and you should put them in a list at the end of your essay. So every source that you have used to write your essay must go in a list at the end. What order should your references be in? Alphabetical. Alphabetical. Okay. This is an example of um, a full reference. Um, can anybody tell us what kind of reference it is? It's a chapter in an edited book. Yes. Chapter in an edited book. <laughs> almost, almost yeah. right. Almost right. Okay, that's it. 